Our next session uh, is a real treat, a first for Club Congress, and we are excited and honored to be presenting uh, an hour-long presentation on the history of the juggling club, presented by renowned juggling historian David Kane. When when I say renowned, I mean world-renowned juggling historian David Kane. I will never forget being at the IJA in person with these tables. I forget which year it was. All these tables, all these clubs from history. And it like, it touched me on this deep level. And that David cares so much about our history, juggling history, um, that he documents it, uh, uh, protects it, um, you know, shares it, writes books about it. Is what a service to all of us, truly. It, it gives me great pleasure. It is, in fact, an honor to introduce to you for our next presentation, Mr. David Kane. Well, hello, everyone. Um, <clears throat> I am David Kane, uh, and uh, I'm coming to you from the Museum of Juggling History, uh, the world's only juggling museum. Uh, we have five rooms of uh, historical juggling props and archives of 15,000 photos and uh, bookshelves full of books and uh, amazing stuff. And I'm coming to you from uh, one of the downstairs rooms, which uh, people don't see as often uh, on social media and things. Uh, but behind me is uh, kind of a chronological and um, organized uh, historical presentation of the history of the juggling club. Um, the first person to juggle clubs uh, was someone who comes from right where I am, Cincinnati, Ohio. And uh, his name was James DeWitt Cook. And he began, uh, he was a club swinger and he um, started toss juggling with clubs in the late 1870s. Um, now, uh, as you sure, surely know, uh, back then the exercise clubs were solid wood, but there were some clubs uh, like these two that were made for swinging, but they're hollow. They're very, very lightweight. Uh, they're called exhibition clubs. And uh, the purpose was if someone was going to uh, demonstrate um, uh, club swinging for a long amount of time, uh, whether it was to sell clubs or other reasons, uh, they wanted a lighter weight club. And so these are, are hollow, they're very light, but they were still swinging clubs. Um, now, you might think, well, why didn't people just start juggling with these? It's because the, uh, the walls of the clubs are so thin that they couldn't take uh, being dropped very often. They would break extremely easily. But... Uh, this was kind of the, the idea uh, that Edward Van Wyck took. Edward Van Wyck was the first uh, retail juggling club maker. And the clubs here, uh, which I will show you in more detail in a moment, uh, were made by Edward Van Wyck. He was also from Cincinnati, Ohio here. Um, he started make, uh, selling clubs in uh, 1895. And so I will show you how they were made. Um, it was a three-part construction. Uh, the body of the club was laid out and then it was cut this way. Uh, and then the two sections were hollowed out. Um, and then they had a beveled edge uh, so that they could be fitted back together. And you can actually see it here. You can see where the seam is, but you can also see that uh, they didn't fit them back exactly right. This area here should have been um, over here. Um, but, and also on this section, they've made a hole where this laid out handle would go in. And then there's a wooden nut that was glued into place. And then the two halves were glued back in in this beveled area. Then a piece of uh, canvas linen uh, was glued and wrapped around the body of the club. And then after that happened, 
uh, I'm being assisted by my twin brother, Scott Kane, who is the assistant curator here. Uh, then uh, this uh, foil was added. And actually, Van Wick thought that the foil was the most uh, innovative thing that he brought to the, the Jumbling Club because it uh, back before this, when people made uh, uh, their own clubs, uh, not only were they usually solid wood, but they had metallic, um, actual, actual metal uh, decorations on them to make it, uh, it even heavy, even heavier. So, <coughs> pardon me. Um, I do have one of his very first uh, clubs. It's heavier than the ones uh, that I just showed you, but uh, he got better over time. Uh, so Edward Van Wick made clubs from 1895 to 1919. Uh, before we move on from him, I, I do want to show you two other clubs that he made. They're both gigantic clubs. Here's one. Really amazing club. And here's another one. Um, here for comparison. Here's yeah. the size of the one. That, yeah, that's the normal club. So, uh, so those are really, really neat. Now, in... 1919, uh, Van Wick sold his the club making a part of his business to Harry Lynn. Van Wick continued to make uh, circus props, a larger circus props, but the club making aspect of his business he sold to Harry Lynn, uh, who was from Jamestown, New York. And uh, from 1920 to 1960, he was the primary uh, club maker. Uh, certainly in the United States and really around the world as far as retail club making goes. Um, and so uh, all the clubs here, well, here are made by Van Wick. No, Harry oh, sorry, Harry Lynn, I misspoke. Scott, we hand me that one. Hi, uh, here is a Harry Lynn club, an unjuggled Harry Lynn club, you can believe that. Um, and instead of uh, making his clubs uh, like Van Wick did this way, uh, he did uh, still did a three-piece construction in wood, but he cut the body of the club lengthwise and then hollowed out the, the sides. And that, and, but when he put the uh, the handle in, the the two halves of the club wedged the handle in, and so it became. Uh, much, much stronger club and a lighter weight club than Van Wick. Um, and then he also would uh, wrap, I don't know if you can see that here, but this is linen, uh, wrapped linen around the club. You can see the seam right there. And then would paint them and then could add other decorations. And so... Um, he he, he, set up no, we're not going to do, do that. Um, he had different models. Uh, this bigger one here is the Bobby May model, it's slightly bigger. Um, no, I don't think uh, Harry Lynn had any connection to existing manufacturers in Jamestown. Uh, good question, though. Uh, so this is a, a Bobby May model. It's a little bigger, and it had a, a flat knob. And uh, this was so that Bobby May could do chin rolls with it. Uh, and so... Uh, if, if you like flat knobs like that, which most of us do, um, unless we're doing club swinging, uh, you owe that to Bobby May. <clears throat> All right, he also made uh, this square club, mirrored club here. Uh, this is the only, uh, we have lots of pictures of it. That's the only existing model that we know of. So that's pretty amazing. And he also made this octagonal club uh, during the winters, the cold winters in Jamestown, New York, uh, he made these. He could make these in his kitchen. Uh, and uh, they're pretty fragile. Um, uh, so uh, not many exist, but this is a nice one. You want to talk a little bit about that one? Um, <clears throat> There were some com competitors of Harry Lind uh, who tried to copy him, and uh, the, the clubs right here are all uh, made by those uh, various makers. 
Uh, some of them were the Jackson brothers, uh, George Toll, Doc Crosby, um, Jack Miller, Jack Miller, Arthur Mann. Um, Scott, why don't you hand me the two Arthur Mann clubs? Uh, so the other ones I, I named, they're very similar to the Harry Lynn clubs. Almost indistinguishable. Yeah, almost indistinguishable. Uh, but Arthur Mann uh, was a, a maker from Chicago in the 1940s. And he made two clubs, two types of clubs. This one is actually paper mache around a, uh, a wooden dowel. And I only know of about eight of these, seven or eight that still exist. And then he made this one, which is a, a, an upholstered club stuffed with horsehair uh, for the body. And so it, it is squeezable. Uh, and then a uh, wooden dowel that runs through in a cork knob. That only three of these are known to exist. Um, so uh, that that was kind of the club making, the first part of club making history in uh, the United States. Uh, now in Europe, um, they were making, they were using some other types of clubs. They were making what are we, we call either skeleton clubs or they were making cork clubs usually um, or sticks. Uh, so we're going to show you some, some things. Uh, now, Enrico Rastelli, uh, the famous Italian juggler in the 1920s and 30s, uh, he used uh, uh, sticks uh, as instead of clubs that were very similar to this. Now, this is actually one of Rudy Cardenas' sticks. Uh, and Rudy was one of the greatest jugglers of all time. Uh, and so I don't have a Rastelli stick. We're still trying to get Rastelli. Um, <clears throat> uh, but this is very similar to what Rastelli juggled. And uh, other people juggled similar types of things. Um, here we have what's known as a ball end club. This is one for, was from Ursula Hill, who juggled in the 1930s and 40s and 50s and 60s. Uh, and so, and then we have a Lottie Brun club, uh, which is more of a, what I call a spring head club. Um, but this is what Francis and Lottie Brun juggled when they juggled clubs. Um, <clears throat> I have another ball in club uh, from uh, Bill Nat. So that's pretty, pretty neat. So uh, there's a long history of this type of club as well, uh, mainly in Europe, but uh, not always. Um, <clears throat> so as I was saying earlier, uh, the two main types of clubs that were popular in the beginning of the first, well, uh, for a long time, many, many decades in Europe, uh, the first type is what we call a skeleton club. And I've got some examples here that I wanna show you. Um, these are skeleton clubs. Um, uh, obviously, the ter I, I coined that term, but we, we actually think I, I may have found an older uh, uh, reference that called them the same thing. You know, it's got a dowel that runs all the way through, but it's got these ribs and uh, this skeleton-like st uh, structure. And then oftentimes they were covered. Uh, in fact, usually they were covered. And you can see the other ones I have back here uh, have a, a covering, a, a cloth or sometimes even a string uh, covering that went over the body of these. Um, uh, another type of European club were, um, were these wicker or rattan, uh, rattan clubs. Um, so the whole structure is uh, done around a, uh, a wooden dowel or wooden center and the, the rest of the structure is all uh, wicker or rattan like this. And so that's really cool. Um, first person to juggle seven yeah, clubs. Thank you, Scott. First person to juggle seven clubs was actually a John Green and he used clubs uh, very similar to this. 
Um, he could juggle uh, seven clubs. Uh, I think he passed away in 1910 at the age of 21. But he could do 35 catches with seven clubs using something very similar to this. You can mention cork clubs. The, the third type of uh, what's year do you juggle seven clubs around 1908, 1907, 1909? No one else did it again until. Yeah, 19... no one else did it again until the mid 1960s when Albert Petrosky did. Um, so the third type of uh, European club was the cork club. So you have a, well, I'll show you the construction of this. It's pretty neat. Uh, you have a wooden dowel and then a uh, piece of cork was put onto that and then was uh, lathed out and then this would be glued and usually covered in various things. And I have some cork clubs. Uh, let's see. Well, I've got just one, but here I'll, I'll grab it. So that would be a decorated court club. So how is the balance on? Everyone's different. Uh, it's a little top, especially this one's a little top heavy. This one's not so bad, but um, yeah, they're all, every one of these is gonna be different, uh, obviously. <laughs> Um, I've still got a lot to show you. Anyone have a question? I, I know I've missed tons and tons of questions here. I'm going to look on the chat real quick. Um, While you do that, let me talk about the books for a second. Yeah, Scott's going to talk to you about the books. So David has um, published 15 books, and two of them that are maybe a special note uh, for this conversation are um, these two. So it's Juggling Props, A History, Volume 1, which includes clubs, balls, and, ring, and rings, special, with a special emphasis on clubs. And the other one is Juggling Props, A History, Volume 2, which is really everything else. Uh, axes, knives, um, well, and, plates. Well, and especially uh, old catalogs from the late, eight, from late 1800s and early 1900s, which gives us a wealth of information. Um, of the um, among the other pro, uh, of the other books, the one that uh, we've most recently come out. This is a, one we wrote together. Is two hundred historical jugglers every juggler should know, and it's a uh, much thicker book than David's normal ones, uh, and uh, it really does cover through these uh, biographies of these two hundred jugglers uh, covers the history of juggling from a performer. Um, a point of view, as well as uh, it does cover the main the main manufacturers, uh, Harry Lynn, Edward Van Wyck, and others do have um, uh, their, their, their some of the 200 jugglers that are in this as well. Uh, so certainly on the, the Museum of Juggling History website, uh, you can check out all these books. That's uh, jugglingmuseum.com. Correct. All right. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. All right. So... Uh, up until the 1960s, um, everyone was juggling either hollow wood, uh, wooden clubs like Harry Lynn clubs or um, one of the more or less uh, homemade clubs that were either cork skeleton clubs or um, the wicker rattan clubs. For the most part. For the most part. Um, so uh, in 1961, we have the first attempt to make a plastic hollow club. Uh, we don't exactly know the manufacturer of these. Uh, we, we have a number of them. We have about 10 of them. Uh, but they're way too light and way too slippery. And so they didn't catch on. Uh, you, could, you could buy these. Yeah, probably blow molded. Um, buy them in magic stores in Europe. Um, so it, we know it was Euro, uh, European, but we don't exactly know the manufacturer. Um, uh, but they did not catch on at all. 
uh, and they were actually completely forgotten about. Um, and then in, uh, <coughs> at the same time, people started also making uh, plastic toy bowling pin clubs. Uh, so at, at this time, plastic toy bowling pins were a popular toy. And so people were taking those and cutting off the top part, putting in a wooden down, making clubs like this. Um, and here's another example. This was made by a, a juggler from New York City named Dave Madden. And um, it certainly had some advantages over a wooden club, but it wasn't still great, but much lighter, much lighter though. So someone that worked with Dave Madden was Jay Green. And Jay decided that he could do better. And so Jay invented this. This is the original modern juggling club. Uh, it's the first club that had a foam knob, a foam end cap, and uh, yeah, a cushioned handle. Thank you, Scott. A cushioned handle. And uh, so this is, even though the shape is, is somewhat different, this is more or less what we use today. Um, uh, it's a multi-piece composite club. Uh, Jay originally came out with this in 1964. Uh, several years later, he came out with a European model, um, thinner. Uh, which is thinner. Um, you know, they're still clumsy by modern um, uh, standards, but uh, nevertheless, this is the the invention of the modern juggling club. Um, now, eventually, Brian Dubé saw this, and uh, when he opened his business. His first clubs were exactly like this. They're pretty much indistinguishable. They still used, uh, as both of these do, a plastic toy bowling pin for the body. We haven't gotten to fiberglass yet. That's the next thing, Brian. Um, uh, so, uh, but then Brian Dubay, uh, before too long, started uh, molding, having a, his full body molded. See this? These have plastic funnels over a plat that meet up with a plastic toy bowling pin. And so Brian Dubé, uh, Scott, you want to grab uh, the original Brian Dubé up top, probably? Uh, that, not that one, this one, that one. Uh, so Brian Dubé came out with this, where it's the whole body is molded there in that spot. And uh, I believe the, the yeah you mentioned a funnel met the met the wall. right right. And All right, Jay, and Jay Green still makes clubs today. <laughs> he does. Yeah, they take forever, but um, so um, so that was in 1964. Now around that exact same time were the first fiberglass clubs. Um, there were actually only three makers of fiberglass clubs. The first one was um, Scott. Thank you. The first one was Ken Binge, and uh, he made this club um, in the mid 1960s and just sold them to a few friends and used them himself. Um, at the same, uh, then roughly uh, very soon after was uh, Claude Crumley from Chicago, uh, who made a variety of fiberglass clubs, at least four different models. Yeah, at least four different models, including a numbers club. Uh, Scott, you want to grab the numbers club? So this is this is Ken Benj. This is Claude Crumley. And here's a Claude Crumley Numbers Club. Oh, yeah. And if anyone really wants, uh, no, that's the Numbers Club. Oh, sorry. If anyone really wants uh, some some fiberglass clubs, we do have a number of Claude Crumley clubs available for sale. Yes. Uh, if, you, if you've always wanted to own those. So, uh, 
Claude Crumley had had some success, but uh, then we come to the true artist of uh, uh, fiberglass clubs, and that was Stu Reynolds. Uh, Stu was a PhD chemist at DuPont and a longtime juggler and, uh, a, friend of Harry Lynn. and a friend of, yeah, he was a, actually, Harry Lynn was his mentor as a juggler uh, and a prop maker. And in 1969, um, Stu found success making uh, uh, the, the perfect fiberglass club. The problem with Ken Benj and, and, and uh, Claude Crumley is that their handles were never perfectly round. They were oval. And uh, that's kind of awkward. Uh, but Stu Reynolds perfected um, uh, making fiberglass clubs. And his clubs were known as the Rolls Royce of clubs because they are pretty much perfect looking. They're really nice. Leather end, light, uh, lightweight, uh, fairly durable, uh, uh, and just a great feel. Um, That's what, what many of the pros rushed to. Right. So in, in the 1970s, a lot of people like Albert Lucas and Dick Franco and people like that, um, they use these. And it's actually, and <laughs> they still, those two, at least Dick Franco and uh, Albert Lucas still do today. They still use. Uh, Stu Reynolds clubs. Um, so uh, Stu made these, uh, sold them during the 1970s and 1980s. And um, uh, they're highly sought after and very rare. Um, the one that's most uh, highly sought after is his bottle club, um, which Scott's gonna hand me here in a moment. Um, so this, these are his, his bottle clubs. Uh, uh, these are highly, highly prized uh, by people. But um, now, um, Niels Dunker, uh, uh, I worked with Niels Dunker and with Stu Reynolds' family, uh, and, and Niels now produces a plastic version of this as well. So, which, Scott, you wanna hand that to me? Which you can see here. So, do you want to do the video and show the all different? Uh, yeah, yeah. Models? We're we're gonna we're gonna move the camera here for a moment and I'm gonna show you uh, some iterations. Scott, you want to do it? Yeah. So these are some all the different Stu Reynolds. Uh, it's got a little farther down so people can see it. We're back up a little bit. All right. And I know that's a little. There we go. So those are different Stu Reynolds clubs. Um, and you see that Stu made a numbers club there as well. Made some really tiny clubs, some really big clubs. Um, on the floor there. On the floor are some uh, wooden sticks that he, he made. And, and this here is a, also a wooden four-sided club that he uh, made as well. Um, Scott, you want to do it? maybe show a close-up of those are the, the competitors to Harry Lynn clubs. And then the up top are the Van, different models of Van Wick clubs. And just uh, when we're talking about Harry Lynn, uh, here's some of the different um, stages. Stages, uh, you know, it starts with a, just a big piece of wood that's very uh, rudimentarily uh, cut out. Well, and, but that one's already been hollowed, Scott. Okay, sorry, it's been hollowed. Um, then here's some of the molds. No, not molds. That, no, that's actually halfway. Oh, halfway completed. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Uh, here's the handle before it the complete, completely uh, uh, laid out. So there's a lot of, lot of information online that David's already done about the, the production of uh, the Harry Lynn clubs, if you want to check those out in more detail. All right. And if you have a desire for a partially finished uh, Harry Lynn Club, we have a number of those available for yes. sale as well. Yes. Which is sort of neat. Yeah, this is already hollowed out but not completely finished. <clears throat> so if you were to put this on the lathe, you could finish out a brand new Harry Lynn Club. But we, we do have some for available for sale. Yes. We, we, we got all the ones 
that when he when he retired or passed away that he had left had had partially finished. All right, I'm looking at questions here. All right, we're going to keep going. Um, yeah, we, we have, before we uh, move on to more modern clubs, we do have some other examples. Oh, Scott, we, we skipped that type of Harry Lynn Club. Yeah. There's a, another type of Harry Lynn Club, which is uh, very rare. And that is the Harry Lynn Basket Club. Giant. Giant Basket Club. Um, it is, uh, uh, well, I could, can't take it apart. It takes forever to take a, take it apart. But um, it, it's a basket. It's a hollow basket club. Uh, uh, people like Bobby May had a set of these. And um, this one belonged to Joe Cook. Yeah, Joe Cook, which is a famous vaudeville performer. Yes, I have lots of clubs from Legendary Jugglers. We're going to show you a few here in a minute. Uh, but most of them are, are upstairs. We had to make a choice whether we're going to do this upstairs or downstairs. We decided to do it downstairs and bring some things down. Um, but yes, we have clubs from most of the yeah famous yeah, people. Most, I mean, Bobby May and uh, Ignatov and lots. I mean, got we have the, the the clubs that got Anthony got one to juggle three clubs with. Uh, yes, speaking of French clubs, we're going to show you one right now that's amazing. Uh, in the year 1900, the Mongadors uh, were started performing. They were the first famous uh, European club passing group, and they use these. Uh, and what this is, it is a uh, a wicker or rattan style club covered in plaster of Paris bandages, more or less, uh, and then dried out. And uh, they used these from 1900 to about 1960 something. Um, two two generations. Yeah, three, uh, three generations uh, used these. And so uh, they are really, really amazing. Um, we have, uh, I'm going to show you per perhaps my favorite club in the whole. Uh, it's it's covered in plaster of Paris, which is like uh, cement on bandages, if you will. Um, so now <laughs> we're going to come to, if not my favorite, certainly one of the most amazing things, uh, clubs I have. Uh, this was made in 1905, I believe. Uh, and this is the Salerno Lighted Club. Um, this is made by the, the famous gentleman juggler Salerno. Uh, it is, uh, uh, it is a resin covered cheesecloth. Like the United States to see that particular. There we go. Sorry. Uh, so let me show you this. Uh, in the end is a button that the that Salerno could push and which turned it on and off. And inside Scott carefully hold this. Inside we have this. So we have a, inside here a very early flashlight battery. Uh, and then it had bulbs, one, one bulb here, and then there was one here, one here, and one here. Um, and this probably changed colors, we think. Uh, we're not sure about that. Um, and so this was inside this hollow shell which is resin covered cheesecloth, we believe. Um, and it's a, and this thing is so brittle, if you drop this, it would break so easily. Um, but uh, the fact that it still exists is amazing. So, Salerno used it first and then passed it along to the all female juggling ju uh, troop, the juggling jewels. Yes, yeah, um, he used this and passed it on to the juggling jewels. Uh, and so that is amazing. And this was not even the first lighted juggling club. Uh, the first lighted juggling club 
uh, was patented by Morris Cronin in 1896, I want to say. Uh, and then actually Van Wick sold electric, he called them electric clubs uh, around, at, in 1900. Um, now I want to show you um, a couple clubs from some of the most famous Russian jugglers. Now upstairs I have clubs from uh, Massimiliano Trutsi and uh, Sergei Ignatov, but I didn't bring those down. But we do have uh, two others. We have this, and if you... Uh, if you know, this is one of the most iconic clubs in the world. This is from Engavi Bellauer, um, the, the incredible Russian uh, club juggler. Uh, he was the uh, the first person to perform a five club, five up pirouette. Uh, the first person, really only person to ever perform a uh, five club, three up front roll in performance. And he did five up in practice. Five up front, five up front roll. Uh, back into the uh, but these are the clubs he used for his three club act. Um, uh, so these are really amazing. A wooden club, wooden club, if you can believe that. But very lightweight uh, construction. So, um, and then another club is uh, Gregory Popovich's clubs. His old style of Russian clubs. Uh, so this is uh, what the finished product looks like, but I want to show you how it was made. So it, let's see if I can do this. Hold it up a little bit, thank you. Uh, All right, so. We have this construction on the inside. Wooden. Wooden, yep. And then cardboard, if you can believe that. Just so, sewn together. together, pieces of cardboard. It was cheesecloth with, or covered in a hard resin uh, for the Salerno Lighted Club. And the, uh, the Mondador Club earlier, someone's asking, uh, was uh, a wicker rattan uh, construction over uh, covered in plaster Paris cloth. So uh, that uh, would then obviously be uh, nailed in down here and, and at the top and then decorated. So that's uh, really neat. Uh, one of the most famous female jugglers of all time was Eva Vita. And she had these amazing clubs covered in uh, rhinestones with a mother of pearl. I don't know if you can see that well, mother of pearl handle. And it's plush, watch this. You can squeeze it, it's like a pillow. Um, and so that's an amazing club. And she uh, did wonderful things with, with five of these. She did un constant under the leg throws. All, all types of things. Yes. Under both legs. Under both legs. Rhinestone. Did you say rhinestone? Yes. Yes. So beautiful club. Yeah, beautiful club. Um, uh, the, the mother of pearl handle is very slick, so she had to put these two pieces of tape there so that they wouldn't uh, slide out of her hands. Um, another very different club um, is uh, was used by a gentleman named Doug Cooden in the 1940s or 30s. <laughs> And it is this club, um, very unique, obviously. Uh, uh, the, the, you can see where the each section goes into the handle, and then there's a uh, disc at the top. So that's uh, very interesting. I can see you, you know, catching balls on on this and doing different types of manipulation with that. So that's really neat. Um, earlier we talked about Jay Green, the inventor of the modern Jet League Club. Um, and I've got a more modern Jay Green Club that he made. Um, but I wanna show you this, it's really cool, watch this. It's a club that becomes a torch. And I think this is a, a uh, 
prototype that, uh, that this is the only one ever made of this, as far as I know. So that's really cool. Uh, All right. More. Yeah, we've got we've got so many so many examples. You you're not even seeing the vast majority of what I have behind me. Um, we've got. This club that's made in Chile. Doesn't matter what side you catch it on. Yeah, it's kind of awkward. Uh, if you take it used to it, uh, you can do you know one and a half and still catch it. Um, oh, I have a whole array of um, foam clubs. Um, Yeah, you want to come around here and help me? Come around the back or something. All right. So these two were made in the 1970s by Lee Letchworth, who was actually a teenager at the time, but he uh, uh, made a mold and um, would put the, uh, a dowel rod in the mold, mold and then fill it full of expanding foam. And he made and sold these. Uh, when I started juggling in 1982 um, and and then got uh, Jugglers World magazines at the time, these were for sale at that time. Uh, and uh, very, very few of these still exist. And these, these are hard foam. But there are other types. There are, this is the Soft Club, which was made in the 19, early 90s, I think. Um, and it's, it was made for combat. It's a uh, squeezable foam. Um, and then uh, Dave Finnegan of Juggle Bug produced this club. He only made four of these, I, I think. Uh, but it, it is another foam club. Uh, and then even to today, uh, foam clubs are being made. Scott Sorensen uh, from Super Jumbler uh, is making these modern phone clubs. So uh, this one's it's pretty soft. This one's a harder phone. So uh, so let's see if there's any questions I have missed. We're not done. We're not done, no. Uh, the only one I think yes. is what about torches. Uh, torches? Yes, sir. Like uh, my, that's a, that's another whole thing. I'm actually uh, hoping to to write an article about the history of juggling torches somewhat soon. For e juggle, yes, for e juggle. Arthur Lebel, yes, the um, the red one, the red European uh, J Green Club is your club. Thank you for donating that to the museum. Um, uh, Oh, I, I, I want to show you a, a pretty fun club. It's got to hand me that. Um, you know, in the 1980s uh, and, and 1990s, Juggle Bug, and even the 70s, late 70s, Juggle Bug was a, a popular brand. Yes. And uh, people don't realize this is, this is the very first Juggle Bug club, and it has a screw-on knob. off because this was made in a bottle factory and so they they designed a, a plastic bottle that was the shape of a club and of course bottles have screw on caps and so this was the very first version of a jungle bug club um oh i've got lots of other Interesting one-off clubs. So I want to give you the Asian club. Uh, this is another juggle bug, a rare juggle bug club. This is the juggle bug Asian club as it was uh, marketed. They only made 600 of these. Um, they look great. They do not juggle great. Um, did you tell the story of the club Bobby Jewel found in the magic store and what he did. <laughs> no, I did not tell so that. That's what that. Uh, so I did talk about the, the club. 
Um, so uh, as I said, in 1960, early 60s, these were around. And uh, Bobby Jewell, uh, famous American uh, juggler who's still alive. And, it's not 96, and 96 years old, we believe, and still goes to juggling festivals. Um, he was in Amsterdam. I believe either Amsterdam or Copenhagen. Or, oh, Copenhagen, yes, Copenhagen, and uh, was in a store, magic store or a toy store, or something. And came across a whole bin of these, and and was like, "Oh my, those are so light! Everyone's going to be able to juggle them." He didn't want the competition, so he bought every single one of them, and then brought them home. Brought them home and never did anything with them; just kept them in storage until he gave them all. To yeah, us. until he gave them all to us. So um, that's a pretty funny story, but uh, and I, I've, so he had some, and then uh, I got uh, three others. Uh, actually, this one was one of the other ones, not the one of the Bobby Joel ones. But uh, yes, so that's a neat story. Um, here's a club that I don't know anything about, but it's a uh, eight or yeah eight sided. Uh, club from the UK, uh, probably hollow wooden construction. Uh, I only know one other set of these that exist, but um, if you know anything about these, I'd love to know uh, who made them and anything about these. I've got some of the more unique stuff. All right, Scott's going to hand me some other clubs. We've got, of course, the Radical Fish Club. Um, made by Beard. We've got the the Renegade Cuphead Club you can catch balls in. They also make a flat head club. And here we have a Joe Cam laser cut club that goes together like a puzzle. And Joe Cam also made um, another club Scott, you want to hand me the very carefully? I'm trying. <laughs> That's what I was trying to do when everything started to fall. Oh, it's not good. He made these porcelain clubs. The uh, whole thing's made out of porcelain. You drop it once, it's a, in a thousand pieces. Uh, so, uh, Joe Juggler and artist Joe Cam invented this, made this. Um, there are things up there. Yeah. Uh, this club is a Freaks Unlimited, um, Freaks Unlimited, uh, which model is it, Scott? Right there. Acrobat. Acrobat Club, thank you. Uh, this is the first club to have a plastic dowel. Uh, so, you know, people often think of PX, uh, PX3s, um, uh, being the first, but no, uh, this was much earlier. Uh, and then actually in the 1990s, uh, they had a plastic dowel. So um, you've got some other giant clubs here. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Scott. Uh, this is a club made by um, Kuehl Spit, a clown out in Las Vegas. It's a, a pretty giant club. Um, really cool, but it is dwarfed by this, which I made, which is, uh, I call them the Goliath clubs. And yes, I can juggle three of these and do different tricks with them. Um, so those are pretty Do you cool. want to mention the impossible clubs? The, uh, the chaos, chaos clubs? Chaos. Yeah, uh, as some of you are maybe aware of the chaos clubs, which is a set of clubs I made uh, that are almost impossible to juggle. Um, uh, for many years, I took them around to different juggling festivals uh, for people to try. Uh, the, the goal was to get 15 catches on the first try with them. And it took us uh, about two years to find someone who did that on the first try. Uh, but uh, they, they, they all look the exact same. Yeah, they all look exactly the same, but each one is weighted extremely differently. Um, and the distribution. Uh, the giant clubs, are they commercially available somewhere? Well, I, I think I'm done making them, but I, I did make several sets for people, but I think I'm done. <laughs> um, the gold clubs are made with newspaper under the gold. Thank you. 
Uh, yes, I think, yeah, you've got the other set, so you would know. Uh, the porcelain clubs were made for an art exhibit uh, about the fragility of life. Uh, where it was a video project where jugglers would, would juggle uh, the porcelain clubs and some porcelain balls and a porcelain Diablo until they were just nothing but dust. Uh, and so, um, yes. Uh, who was that? Uh, well, I made, I made the giant clubs, uh, if, if that's what you're asking. All right, here's the first ever 3D printed club, or the body of it is at least 3D printed. If I remember right, that was 3D printed in Australia. Um, here is a um, crochet, crochet, Scott, crocheted club made, made by Erica Kelsch Slesnick. So that's really neat. Um, so I've got, you know, we've got lots of other clubs here. Um, some that are up here, up here are just uh, these, those two, the yellow one and the, and the white and pink one were made by uh, Ricker, which was a very short lived juggling company. Rick Bright. Uh, Rick Bright was the maker. We've got some modern wooden clubs here. We have this unknown bulb club, uh, which we, uh, I think comes from the UK, but we don't know the maker. We have this club, which is the worst club I think I've ever seen in my life. It was some 1950s sparkly club thing. It was horrible. Uh, genetic kids club here um these are all uh jungle bug clubs here um oh we have a dubai no is that a dubai or a uh that's a renegade, renegade numbers club uh renegade made numbers club so did dubai i've got one of those upstairs um so um as far as as far as the the clubs from performers uh, in, in that book that I referenced, our, our 200 historical jugglers, every juggler should know. Um, we, the first chapter of that is uh, we review uh, the careers of 30 jugglers who we call the masters. And of those 30 jugglers, uh, David has props from 25 of them here in the museum. And not all of them juggled with clubs, although most of them did. And uh, so we have, I mean, we have clubs from we have clubs from Bobby May and Lottie Brun and Trootsy, uh, Trootsy and uh, Salerno, Sol yeah, Salerno uh, Bobby May, Dignitov, Dignitov Bellauer, Popovich, um, just lots and lots of people. Um, uh, and, and a lot of modern day jugglers as well. We have clubs sure. from uh, Paul Ponce and uh, Francois Rocher that she learned with as a kid and uh, Gina Schwartzman. Gina Schwartz. Uh, but but even Wes Peden and Jay Gilligan and um, we have a lot lot of um, world record clubs, you know, the, that were, were used for uh, Neil Dolls, right? Uh, nine Club, Nine Club Flash, and things of that sort. Uh, oh, I missed that. Someone made a comment or a question. And I missed it while I was up. I want to see how each type juggles. <laughs> come to the yeah, come to the museum. Uh, uh, do you have any problem with people wanting to toss them? Just Scott. Dep it, de it depends <laughs> on what they are. Not like the Salerno Club. No. Uh, yeah, there, there are a few things that are, are are too fragile for anyone to juggle. But um, most things, if you just want to take it out and give it a flip, uh, if I'm there with you, we can often do that. Uh, so we've got about eight minutes left. Does anyone have any last minute questions? I, I could show you a few more odds and ends, but I think we could perhaps be better served by uh, anyone asking any questions. If you had to pick one club as your prized club, I know it's impossible, but what would it be? That Salerno lighted club is hard to pass up. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, what is on your wish list? Question from the chat. Okay. Um, well, overall for the museum, uh, the two main things are a Cinquevalli prop. There's only one known to exist, which is this cannonball, which is in uh, the UK. 
I've performed with it, but I don't have it. Uh, and a Rastelli prop. Mm. So um, those are the, but the, 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 the other three jugglers that from our top 30 that we don't have props from are Bella Cremo, Bella Cremo, Jenny Jager, yeah. and um, Everhart, William, William Everhart. Everhart, a hoop roller. So those are the people, some of the things we're missing. Um, there is a club, there are two clubs I'm missing that I really want. One is uh, Stu Reynolds uh, Fiberglass Trootsy Club. Which he made two styles. Uh, well, he made one, one's a club and one's the stick. stick yeah. This is, um, well, Scott, go get the catalog, which is in the next. Is it in your book? Um, maybe. I, I, I would get it. All right. Uh, and the other is uh, from the UK. It is a Freak Style Limited Jester Club. Uh, so it was a very small club with a beanbag type body. Um, so uh, they only made a hundred of those, and they weren't very popular. Uh, but I, I really wish I had that. So um, the Trudsy Club is that club at the bottom there, right next to my finger. So it has a bulb, a bulbous uh, uh, shape to it. Um, so we're still getting stuff all the time. We've gotten several new big collections recently that we haven't made public yet. Um, we have stuff arrive every we, week. Yeah, stuff arrive every week, if not uh, every other day. Uh, and we're, pretty much out of room out of room now so that's a i guess a good problem to have uh but we're still getting stuff and still working hard uh the, the museum has a hands-on section if you want to juggle three of anthony Gatta's clubs we have that yeah uh we have uh uh a lot of, a lot of hands-on stuff yeah um and, and the and the museum has a huge collection of Diablos, of vintage spinning plates, of um, all types of stuff. Just everything. Yeah. All right. Someone asked, uh, has or would there ever be another name than club? Probably not. Um, you know, people are like, oh, did it, was, were they originally pins or something? No, they've always been clubs. Uh, because uh, club they, swing, they, it they, came, yeah, from, came club from club swinging. swinging. And the first person to ever juggle clubs. He built himself as the king of clubs. The, the problem is, is that on eBay or other things, there are tons of actual swinging clubs. We could, before barbells existed, that's what people used to work out, and they were very co common. Uh, and they're listed on eBay as antique juggling clubs. And uh, maybe one out of every 400 is, yeah. but uh, the other 399 are are just swinging clubs with no, no value. To I them. spend a lot of time answering emails from people saying, are these just, are these antique juggling clubs? And the vast majority of the time, the answer is no. Those are exercise Indian clubs. And they're pretty much worthless because they're so common. Um, let's see. Anyone else? I, 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 Anyone have a question about do we have a club from some fav famous juggler? We've still got three or four minutes left. I'll say I'll say this: the the Mongador clubs are really special clubs. They, they, uh, the daughter, the youngest member of, of the Mongadors, uh, juggled five of them, and and they're those are they're massive clubs. They're they're much larger than your normal club yeah. and much heavier. Yeah. And she juggled five of them in performance. All right, we have a question. Do we have a club from Alexander Kiss? Well, at one point we thought we were going to have his bounce club, his famous bounce club. Uh, but we have two rings. We have two rings. We have uh, two uh, Alexander Kiss's rings. One uh, is one of his standard plastic rings, and the other one is one of his famous uh, uh, aluminum, aircraft aluminum rings. Um, but no club. But no clubs. Um, for much of his early career, he used sticks very similar to what Scott's going to hand me here. He used these uh, for most of his career, uh, something very similar to this, and then made his own clubs towards the end of his career. 
Um, and he was the first juggler to juggle five. What are the ever. first clubs Gatto used? Well, we don't have time to run up and get them. They're chair legs with, with balls glued to the end. Do you have the one-off theme clubs for one event? Um, well, like Dewdrop Jugglers. Yeah, we have, we have the Dewdrop Jugglers Club that has a claw, a, a cl claw that closed and, and everything like that. For their act in 1996. Yes, there are KISS clubs we know in St. Petersburg. There's lots of stuff in St. Petersburg that we really want. Um, I want that bounce club. Man, I love the KISS bounce club. That's one of the most iconic clubs of all time. Um, and there are many, many uh, Rastelli sticks out there. We know of yeah. five or six collectors that have Rastelli sticks, which are their version of clubs. And uh, but unfortunately, we don't have been able to procure yeah. one yet. We really want a Rastelli prop. <laughs> well, folks, uh, it looks like that's about my time. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you, Scott Kane, for helping out so much, uh, and thanks for having having us. We really appreciate. it. Let's show some love for David and Scott Kane at the Juggling History Museum, Juggling Museum. Holy moly, uh, directors, help me out. Throw the links in the chat yet again. That was stunning.